this, which means I'm bullish on Bitcoin still um, as well. Um, watch this high here from this side. So the high from uh, not obviously today's high that happened at uh, one o'clock in the morning or something, uh, our time. Um, just watch while price comes up to here. But I mean, look, Ethereum actually has done all of this. So Ethereum is just bullish. And usually, I mean, look, Ethereum is already at the top. So this could be maybe a leading indicator that um, we're going higher as well on Bitcoin, which kind of like makes sense in a way, because like I said, the S&P has done its business to the downside. So I'd, I'd, yeah, I'd, li I'd like, well, not I'd like, you know, it'd be nice to see trade above because we've, you know, we're now trending up. So, you know, low of the range, high of the range. Okay, Bitcoin, the same thing. You know, we're training up, so we expect at least it to go higher. And don't forget the the, uh, the stream on order blocks where we were looking for 23K, which has not happened yet, which is just simply that retracement to here, take profit above the high, decline on open interest, if you remember, here, as we takes the high, so really, really good. Comes back down another higher low, and then now we're heading to... If we just use the uh, negative targets, then you go, you've got 23, 24 and 26. And on Ethereum, for example, if you just go, oh, this is BTC. Let's go on Ethereum. On Ethereum, just like not anchoring it like 100%, but you could see that we are near the top. So, and here you have take profit one, uh, two, three, four. Usually the one is quite hard to get to on these higher time frames. Uh, no, I'm not going to do Sol, um, but I think this this is uh, this is enough for today. Uh, I'm going to save my voice because maybe I'll um, yeah I might have to do this stream because um, yeah of all those glitches um, and maybe we can wait for some more market data and when we see um, this range finally being traded to, then we'll have even more uh, more bias. Okay, but at the moment. Higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high. Okay. And one more thing I would like to do because I personally like this very much is this parallel channel that I've been using. Uh, it's constructed with these two pivots up here and this lower pivot here. So this I've considered a deviation uh, mid-June. It has acted very nicely as a resistance to complete the D of the Gartley and look at that tap on the lower side. So that's the 19K weekly and the bottom of that parallel channel. So has been it has been very well respected. And not only is it very useful to take possible, possible paper trade, uh, trade setups from one edge to the middle, to the other edge, to the middle and continue the range story. It is also a possible nice heads up if we were to break out of this range to the upside or to the downside because the edges will be flipped to support and, and now I'm jumping perhaps a little bit ahead but if we were to break out here this will be flipped to support and if we were to break to the downside then we will lose the bottom of the parallel channel and flip it to resistance so that's kind of a bit of an possible early heads up that uh, the range could be ending yeah um, so this fractal obviously so far has given us high low high um, pretty much a low of the weekly tap. Again, it's not going to be absolutely 100% perfect. Okay. It's just not going to happen, but we can see more or less how it gave us this weekly low. Okay. Never closed below it. 30 million trap shorts of the low. So if this fractal is going to follow, this would signify that the high is in at 21,600 here. Um, and we're going to be coming back down to revisit around this weekly. As you know, you just saw Victor show you the new daily level there, there as well. So you've got the daily, um, new daily level there around 19,300. So if this fractal is going to follow out, we're going to see another test of that low before a move to the high of the range, which if you remember this range that I was looking at, which is from the one hour, this is a one hour green candle. I'll just show you really quickly if you can't remember. This was our one hour green candle. So if this fractal is going to follow out, it will mean another move to the downside before another move up to around $23,000 to $24,000. Um, and for me, this is where I would be looking to um, see the a failed auction or a swing failure pattern. For me, there's only two possible things that I would do up at this high. If we really simply blast through the level, no short to be taken, 
no trade at all. The only thing I would be looking for then, if option number one is we go through the level, no trade, look for higher. Option number two is that failed auction slash swing failure pattern. I would only execute after that. There's no way I would try and short this blindly because of the fact if we actually clear this range high on strength, I would look towards $28,000 to $30,000. So why would I want to short at $24,000 if I think we're going to $28,000 to $30,000? E.g. I wouldn't do that. I would only execute the short upon a swing failure pattern or failed auction back into the range. Then I have a short setup. If we do not tap this first, then that 29, um, 19200 is still a really big level of support. But on this one, because it is a swing trade, <laughs> and this is going to be like a major, major, major support. I would, obviously, this is going to have more data and this point of control is likely going to change. But the point of control of that range is going to be a significant level for me, as well as the value area high. So, of course, we don't know that this factor is going to play out, but let's say it played out and it ended in a failed auction. I would be looking for that value area high to potentially hold a support. Okay, if we got acceptance back below that, well, that's when then I can look for the point of control for a potential reaction, or of course, the value area low for the potential reaction. Um, and if, of course, we just trade down through it and we lose those levels, we lose the weekly, then that's where I'll be looking finally that back down towards the um, about $17,000, where once again, I'll look for the I wouldn't preset any longs here, but if we see a failed auction swing failure pattern, that then gives me a long setup. So I have a potential short setup here from a failed auction swing failure pattern. I have a potential long setup down here from a failed auction swing failure pattern. And until one of those things happen, I would either execute, look to execute once more down at this weekly. Mm, I'm already in a short from here. So if I, if I get stopped out this short, I'm not really that bothered. You know, let's say that we find support here and we just move up. Guess what? I get stopped out that short. I've already hit take profit one. I'm, I'm wouldn't bother me at, in the slightest. I would really simply look for higher where I'd be looking once again around this daily or, or, or the highs here.